Hey there, Ramon Osu with you here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the easy forehand every time. Let's get started. Let's face it, it's really frustrating when you get one of those nothing special shots. You know, average spin, average power, average placement that you feel like you should be able to not only make, but do something offensive with and then you blow it. I know it's frustrating for me when it used to happen to me more often than I'd like to admit. And you know, I was watching a match with a couple of buddies of mine who were both around the 4.0 level, and I decided to chart their match and actually pay attention to how many um, points were won and lost on unforced errors. And how many do you think it was? Put it down in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what you think. Well, out of 63 points that were played, 31 of those points were won and lost on unforced errors. That's 48% of points were lost on errors, unforced. What if you could cut that number in half or more? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the first and most crucial step to eliminating those unforced errors, and I'm gonna give you a really cool, actionable drill that'll help you start to develop that confidence and that consistency in your forehand that'll help you out hit and flat out frustrate your opponents. And I wanted to give you the most important thing, the thing that would have the greatest impact on your ability to hit the easy shot every time. It's the contact point, okay? It's the moment of truth. It is the moment that the racket hits the ball. That's what's gonna dictate what the ball does, right? We know the ball goes where the strings are pointing at contact. And there's been a lot of confusion about where exactly this contact point is. And a lot of coaches, a lot of players that I talk to say, well, you know, you hit it out in front of you or you hit it a little bit later if you're going down the line, a little bit earlier if you're going cross court. But if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I think this is confusing advice at best and detrimental at worst. Okay, what we wanna do is we wanna make contact at a very precise point. So here it is, you wanna make contact on your forehand with your hitting arm at the 45 degree angle into the court with a good amount of extension away from your body in the center of the racket. Everything we do before and after this is really icing on the cake. This is something I learned years ago from a guy named Jack Brody, who is really a scientist you know, on the tennis court. And he found out that this is the meeting place of the vertical and the horizontal axis, which sounds really fancy, but basically all it means is it's the balance point. And it's the point you're gonna have the most power with the least amount of effort from a physics kind of scientist standpoint. Not only does it do that, but it gives you the ability to change the direction of the shot with a slight feathering of the wrist like you're seeing here. So do me a favor, stand up for a second, or if you're driving, you can just imagine this or pull off the road and stand up if you're really excited to get this going. And I want you to turn your body so your hips are at a 45 degree angle to the net like this. Okay, now I want you to stick your hitting arm out on the other 45 degree angle. So we kind of got a V shape going between our hips and our arm. We're in a semi-open stance here, which incidentally is where we'll get the most biomechanically advantaged rotational capabilities. Try saying that five times fast. Basically, it means we can turn real good, okay? But this is where we wanna make contact with the ball, okay? Good, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the wall, or if you have a friend that can feed you a ball, that's great. And just practice bumping the ball up against the wall with your arm around that 45 degree angle. Try to get good extension away from your body so you're not T-Rexing it, and just do this for a while until you lock it in. Okay, next what I want you to do is feel your arm extending out along the 45 degree angle like this. Kind of like the go-go gadget racket from Inspector Gadget, okay? So one of the things we talk about a lot on this channel is that you want your strokes going inside out, meaning you want the stroke to start in close to your body and sort of lengthen and extend outward as you hit. Okay, next do the same thing, but I want you to slowly start to rotate your hips, hips into the court as your arm is extending along this line like this. So if you're a righty, you're gonna feel your left hip rotating towards the left as you bring your right hip through. This is simulating the rotation that you'll be using when you go to hit the ball. So let your hips initiate the movement and just let your arms stretch out along that 45 degree angle like this. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna hit the ball against the wall, but we're not gonna swing at it. Instead, we're gonna try our best to stay with our arm on the 45 degree angle with our hitting arm and let our hips gently start the movement as we extend our hitting arm along that 45 degree angle like this. So you're going from small on the 45 degree angle 
to big on the 45 degree angle. We're lengthening into the hit as we rotate our hips into the court. Now, you're gonna quickly realize how powerful this is because your racket is literally never off the ball, which cuts your chance of error way down, which is awesome. Now, I can hear some people saying, well, Ramon, that's not realistic because as soon as we start to take the racket back, it's gonna screw up all the timing. And the truth is, this is just the first step in a 10-step sequence in a new course that I created called How to Make the Easy Forehand Every Time, but it's the most crucial step because we're establishing that point of contact and we're learning the basics of how your hips and how your arm are gonna be moving through this shot. Because you can have the best racket lag in the world, you can have the best backswing, you can have a beautiful silky follow-through, but if you don't get to the point of contact consistently, none of that stuff's gonna matter. This drill takes care of that for you. So basically we want rotation, we want extension, and we wanna be on that 45 degree angle into the court. So with that said, give this a whack. Go out to the wall, have a good time with this, see how many you can get in a row, and notice what it feels like when you make contact right on that 45 degree angle. If you want a program that teaches you how to make the easy forehand every time, step by step, then check out the link down below and check out my new course, How to Make the Easy Forehand Every Time. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, do me a favor and click the like button down below and let me know in the comments what your favorite shot is. Do you like the forehand cross court? You like acing your opponent down the tee? I'm really curious to hear what that is and leave any comments and questions you have down below. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.